Well, the Pico laser is a very effective instrument. It is used to clear pigments because it shatters the pigments in picoseconds. There are various reasons why this may not be the most appropriate. We can consider the skin type, for example. Having a different colour means a different start point for the laser because the laser doesn't quite differentiate between what is normal pigment and what is deemed abnormal pigment. There are also functional factors, hormonal factors, for example. Having a hormonal imbalance can render a patient a bit more resistant to treatment, whatever laser you use. Under this, there's also some underlying causes. For example, condition like melasma. Not only is there a manifestation of darkening pigment, but the underlying cause that we need to address in melasma. There is an inflammatory response. There's also a defective basement membrane. These also need to be considered, not just knocking off the pigments. And of course, melasma, the pigmentation, it is sensitive. Too much power can cause hyperpigmentation response. We also need to look at the types of pigmentation. There are the more deep-seated pigments that are harder to get rid of versus more superficial pigments. Now, these are easier. We also need to look at the settings of the laser. Incorrect setting can render the treatment ineffective. We need to look at whether there's sufficient power, the correct spot size, the amount of stacking or dwell time that's needed to achieve an endpoint. We also need to look at the number of sessions. Very often, an insufficient number of sessions is used and we expect that pigmentation can be cleared in a short time. But we need to do it gradually. We also need to understand that in between laser treatments, there's also continued exposure to the sun. There's new pigmentation that keeps forming as a normal response to exposure. After all, pigmentation protects the skin from harmful effects of the sun. Finally, it may require a combination of treatments, not just the Pico laser, but a combination of energy-based devices, sometimes with medication, sometimes a combination of energy-based devices that can include using a laser with a microneedling device. A microneedling device comes in very handy in the maintenance phase of pigment control. With a selective microneedling device with selective radio frequency, what happens is these needles are inserted in the very superficial part of the dermis and sending the pulses of radio frequency then strengthen the dermis, increasing collagen, increasing elastin, and all this support system makes the skin firmer, more healthy, and more resistant pigment change.